Okay, we're in the ECG course, the last lesson in the uh, fundamentals unit here in level one. The last lesson on lead placement. It's a quick one. It has a lot of information that several of you probably already know if you've been working in the field uh, for very long. So, first definition of artifact. Artifact is junk. It's crappy, junky stuff on your EKG that gets in the way of you seeing the waves, segments, and intervals that you're trying to see. So we hate artifact. We want to stamp it out, eliminate it in our lifetime, keep it off of our EKGs because we don't need any noise interference. We don't need any distraction. We need to see nice, clean tracing so we can make quick, accurate decisions. What is artifact caused by? Well, any kind of electrical interference, which is everywhere in an ambulance. Your cell phone, the truck's cell phone, the patient's cell phone, the mobile radio, whether it's transmitting or receiving, doesn't really matter. Transmitting throws off different sorts of artifact. There's something called an inverter, which takes the electricity coming off your alternator that's 12 volt and turns it into 110 volts like in your house. So there's electrical stuff going on in an ambulance and plus the engine and all the computers and stuff that run the, the, the vehicle itself. So there's a bunch of electrical interference. That's just one thing, but then the patients move and they have muscle tremors. They shiver or they're scared or, or, or they're just moving around or they're breathing rapidly and their chest is moving. Then there's the vehicle moving down the road because we know that every street is smooth. There's no such things as potholes or gravel roads. And so there's multiple reasons for there to be electrical interference and patient movement. But the number one most overlooked cause of artifact that we can actually do something about is poor skin contact. Many times we don't even do the most cursory quickie prep of the skin. And if you will just take that plastic backing that your sticky electrode is, is, comes with out of the package, put the wire on the electrode, peel the electrode off, and then take that little piece of plastic and just quickly scrape where you're going to put the electrode. Real quick, it will make a huge, huge difference. Just get a little bit of that dead skin, a little bit of that skin oil off of there. There's also sweat, there's blood, there's dirt. And on this may shock you, but a lot of our patients don't seem to understand bathing. And so there's just stuff on their skin. And at least there's a layer of dead skin and some oil on almost all of us. So just scrape it real. You don't have to shave very often. If they're gorilla hairy, then you got to shave them. But really, everybody needs a quick skin prep. And if you're not putting the electrodes on, if, if your EMT partner's doing it or your fire department helpers are doing it, train them real quick because you will mess around trying to deal with artifact, figure out why you can't get a clean tracing. It'll cost you more time in the long run than it would to just do good quick skin prep. You also don't want to use those electrodes that have been sitting out forever and ever. Now the electrodes that are packaged in the big bulk pack and you open this pack of 50 and then it sits there and is exposed to the climate that we have in the back of our ambulance and, and the things dry out. Good electrodes fresh out of the package, the, the backing used real quick or a four by four or something used real quick for skin prep it does make a difference. Not trying to, you know, to sell you more expensive electrodes. A lot of times the cost on those is a, is a major factor and they probably are lower quality if they're cheaper. But if they're fresh out of the package, they ought to work. It's the skin you gotta deal with. It's not the electrodes, the skin. So anyway, hey, where do the wires go? Well, the limb leads go on the limbs. That's why they call them limb leads. Otherwise they'd call them kind of sort of chest leads. But they don't. They're called limb leads. So they ought to be on the arms and the legs. Now they don't have to be clear at the distal end of the arms and legs like they're shown on this schematic. But you really also shouldn't get them too much up onto the chest. They should be on the upper arm, maybe the upper chest. You can find a non-hairy, non-dirty, non-greasy place uh, to put them. That's, that's usually your best bet. Um, and you would like to not have a lot of movement and tremor that's causing you artifact. It is fine to put them where it shows in the diagram there, um, but um, you know they're the limb leads, so let's try to put them on limbs. 
Then there's the precordial leads, which is a nice word for chest leads. And accurate placement here is really important, as well as good skin prep. This is where there may need to be a little bit of shaving that goes on, but do it quick, get it done. The razors, the, the electric clippers, the electric clippers are better than the little disposable handheld razors. Clip that skin, or clip that hair, and you'll do less damage to that skin. So uh, some skin prep and this and that. Hey, so look at where those electrodes go. And there's V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. It does matter where they go. You do need a landmark. A lot of us have gone through uh, physicals for fire department or pre-employment, and you've been to a clinic or a doctor's office or some other provider, and it just appears that they um, look at the chest and throw the electrodes down there, and I'm pretty sure they are. Um, it seems like the last two or three EKGs I've had for for physicals have shown some anomaly that's not really there and it's not really there because the leads are put in the wrong place so let's put these in the right place this is not me <clears throat> it is not I swear it is not um, but uh, this is a more typical patient than you see in some of the diagrams and you can see how the limb leads have kind of worked their way up onto the chest that left arm and right arm limb leads boy those are those are pretty darn close. That's a little closer than I'm happy with. I'd rather those be more up on the limbs. Then you see the red wire for left leg and the green wire over there for the right leg. That's okay. Um, down, down in that position is okay. I just like those upper two arm leads to be closer to the arms than they are to the chest. But that does give you a good idea where V1, V2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 should go on the chest and landmarks are important. So, you haven't learned this already, you need to find the sternal notch and right below, distal to the sternal notch is the angle of Louis. Some of us have a more prominent angle than others. That's shown palpating that in B, in the picture B there, the top one on the right. And then as you move down to the second one down the left, now they've found the angle of Louis and they're working their way over and they're finding the second intercostal space. And then as you work down to that third picture on the left, now they're moving down because you find the angle of Louis. That's the second intercostal space. But we want V1 to be in the fourth intercostal space. So you're just working your way down the ribs. We do this in class. We do it in EMT+. Plus. Um, and a lot of folks come into class already thinking they know how to do this. And we verify that they do because lead placement matters. And so finally, in, in picture F there, the third one down the right, you can see that V1 has been placed. I really like to have the wire attached to the sticky electrode before I stick it on my patient. That works much, much better. But in this case, they did it for clarity. They just marked it uh, with, with the spot. Then you run, that's at the right sternal border. So it's the fourth intercostal space, right sternal border for V1. Then right across, left sternal border. Same place, fourth intercostal, left sternal border for V2. And then everything keys off of V1. Uh, you move V2 across, and everything's keying off of V2. And, and But we're finding these in a purposeful manner. Everything else keys off of V1. You come over to the left sternal border for V2. Then you go down for V4 to the next intercostal space down at the mid-clavicular line. So V4 is fifth intercostal, left midclavicular line, and V3 is physically halfway between V2 and V4. Regardless of the intercostal space or whatever, it doesn't aligns, it doesn't matter. It's just physically halfway in between. So find V1, work your way across the sternum. Now you've got V2. Go down one and over to the midclavicular line. Now you have V4, stick V3 in between. Now you're ready for V5 and V6. Put V5 at the same level as V4 and put it at the anterior axillary line and then put V6 at the mid axillary line. Real easy. That's the standard 12 lead placement, the standard chest leads for a uh, that look at the left ventricle. Um, there's some times where we want to look at the posterior wall of the left ventricle. And so we'll need to use posterior leads. Here they show 
uh, V7, V8, and V9. I just like to have a V8. And so V8 is at the tip of the scapula, the mid-scapular line. And it's at the same level as V4, 5, 6 were. And I just take that wire off of V6 and move it around to V8 and run the 12 lead again. We'll practice this over and over and over. V8, good lead. Look at the posterior wall. We talk about leads and walls later on. I'm just wanting you to see that there are additional places for chest leads besides the standard V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is not a 15 lead EKG or a multi lead EKG or whatever else people are calling it. This is just a posterior lead and you do this in, in certain cases. We'll talk about it a lot later. Where do you put it? You take V6 wire, a new sticky pad, and stick this thing at the mid-scapular line at the same level. <clears throat> Sometimes we want to do a right-sided EKG because the standard EKG looks at the left ventricle, but what if I want to see the right ventricle a little bit better? And so you could do an entire right-sided EKG, but our standard practice is just to use one. V4, take V4 off the left side, move it over to the right side. So it's fifth intercostal, right midclavicular line, gives you a V4R. I take the V4 wire, new sticky pad, hook it together, find my right spot, stick it over on the right side. So that right-sided chest lead and that posterior chest lead, we tend to use those together. We'll do the standard 12 lead look. If we find something called an inferior MI, then we want to take another look using different angles. I want to look at that right ventricle and that posterior wall. That's when I need those special leads. So standard chest lead placement um, is important that you get it right. Don't just throw the leads on there. Uh, measure down and find anatomically where you're supposed to be. Okay, so V1, by the way, and we talk about this a lot more later, but V1, by the way, is positioned right over where the P waves come out. The right atrium, where the SA node is, that's where the P waves are generated. So if I want to look at the very, very best way to see what's going on with P waves, if I want the camera, the lead camera, that's focused in tightest, zoomed in on that, SA note and see in the very best P wave, V1's my lead. Lead misplacement is a big deal and it's real easy to get distracted. You're looking at the patient and the patient's left is on your right. It's only human that you, you could possibly mess that up. Plus in high performing paramedic crews, the EMT is putting these leads on. So double check. Anytime you see something that you don't think is right on the EKG, let's make sure we at least got the leads in the right place before we start trying to chase down a diagnosis. Bad chest lead placement leads to bad decisions uh, from bad data. Lead misplacement's a big deal. So the first thing you want to do when you think you have a heart attack, you found a STEMI, check those leads. We have an example we'll show and share with you in class of a patient at a clinic with a 12 lead that clearly showed ST elevation, but when they got to the ER, there was no ST elevation. You know why? Uh, because the leads, the wires got mixed up. V4 got switched with V1. It's easy to do. It's easy to do. It's also easy to check. So bad leads equal bad call. Check for lead misplacement.